Welcome everyone to a special edition of Ask the Crown. I am CEO Pamela Pervet, and I have a very exciting show for you tonight. I know that everyone has heard about my guest. I am sure they have seen her over a billion viewers from 120 countries. I'm going to tell you I have the pleasure of having with me tonight Miss United States, Elizabeth Seyfried. Hello, Elizabeth. Hello, thank you so much for having me. Everybody was just glued to the set when you were on the Miss World stage. Oh, thank you. Oh, no, no, no. It was a fabulous performance. Miss World puts on a wonderful production. And we just couldn't believe it. I mean, there were so many different things going on. We've been watching, I've been watching since you were crowned at Miss United States. I was actually there. And you have just, in four months, you have, you're on, uh, in London in the Miss World stage. Tell me a little bit about the history of Miss World. Well, Miss World was created in 1951, and this was actually the 64th annual Miss World pageant. So that makes it not only the largest international pageant at over 120 countries, but the longest running as well. So clearly they're doing something right, and it's an amazing organization to be a part of. It actually started as a bikini contest, like many pageants here. Oh, no way. <laughs> considering we just got rid of the uh, swimsuit portion of Miss World. So we just continue to evolve and evolve as uh, the world modernizes, and I'm excited to see what's in the future of Miss World. Yeah, and that's, very, that's a good point, because women are, 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 are changing. So Miss World is changing with the woman. So, I mean, that's the, I mean they, you're right. They just keep on evolving. So let me ask you something. Tell us, walk us through a normal day at Miss World. There is no normal day in this world. Every single day was so completely different and such a whirlwind and you really learned by, you know, the first week to not expect anything because you have to expect everything. Anything could happen at this world. And you know, there were nights where we thought we had nothing the next day and we would get a call that morning and they would say you have 30 minutes to get ready and be down for media day. So just things like that where you have to be on the, the tip of your toes and you've just got to be ready for anything, uh, prepared, and just just ready to, for uh, example, take on the world. And there are several – I'm sorry? How fitting, take on the world. Exactly, exactly. They really want a well-rounded contestant, and that includes being able to handle any challenge thrown your way. So they certainly made sure to keep us on our toes and keep us ready for anything. So we would start off with breakfast in the morning, and that was very important to them that we started off breakfast as a team, as a family, that everyone sat down, had a good breakfast because we did have such challenging days. Uh, then we would move on to either rehearsal or a challenge event or some sort of fun activity like shopping, touring London. Uh, we actually went to see the Phantom of the Opera, and it was just all really that <laughs> we were watching. Yes, and that's actually my favorite uh, Broadway musical of all time. I think I've seen it six times. So, <laughs> so I, I was really excited about that. That was a special treat. Oh yeah, I, I agree with you. Phantom of the Opera is fabulous, and I can't even imagine how fabulous it would be in London to be able yeah. to watch it. Now I have to ask you. <laughs> seven hour plane ride and I have to say this, I know you forgot your tutu on the plane. So uh, you know, <laughs> I heard that the stewardess came running after you saying, a flight attendant, you forgot this. <laughs> yes, I I was so blessed to have American Airlines as one of my sponsors and you know they treated me like royalty and made me feel so comforted on my way to London. But obviously all that stops once you get to London. <laughs> What what was your first impression of Miss World and what was it like? Just seven hour plane trip, you know, trying to get all your luggage, getting to the actual you know, hotel. So what was your first impression when you first, you know, checked in? Yeah, I, I had a great, uh, a great chauffeur. The Miss World organization has chauffeurs meet us at the airport and transport us to the hotel, and they sort of give you a little tour around London on your way, take you through the scenic tour. And when I got there, um, I immediately was rushed into arrival photos, and um, you know, it was, I had spent seven hours in the same makeup, hair, clothes, <laughs> and I had to go take my pictures. That was very unnerving. And the first girl I actually met at Miss World was Rolene Strauss 
who became Miss World uh, only a month later. So to see one of the most beautiful hu human beings in the world uh, as the very first person, first contestant you meet at Miss World, <laughs> it was certainly unnerving. But we were taken to a, a very small room packed with contestants. And uh, it was obviously very scary because you don't know who can speak the same language as you, who uh, might be in the group that you're in. So it, it was certainly intimidating, but it was definitely something I won't forget. Did you even sleep? I did. I did. Oh, I uh, stayed up for probably the past two days trying to equip myself a little bit for the jet lag and um, not to mention all the packing I had done was so tiring <laughs> that I was ready to sleep once I got on the plane. So I did get a little bit of rest in, but I was knocked out that night when I got to London. <laughs> so so let, let's discuss the media challenge. Yes. I have to tell you, we were sitting there watching the, 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 the leaderboard, oh. <laughs> and we were like, oh, oh, what just happened? I was honored when I received the phone call from your national director, Chris Wilmer, from London, of course, and it wasn't even a phone call. I think it was a Facebook chat. <laughs> and he said, Pageant Live, I need your help. I need your help. Elizabeth has 24 hours to get out media about Miss World. And I was like, we're here for you. We were here for you, the t you know, Team Pageant Live. We... we we, I reached out to um, a coach, pageant coach, Kyle Haggerty, and I said, come on, he's a natural fit, because I know he was part of your preparation team for Miss World, so he was just like a natural fit, so I reached out to him, and our social media team, uh, we put everything together, I have to tell you, kudos out to Miss, Miss United States team. They, once, once we actually had the interview down, they started, everybody just started pushing it out. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell you, we were sitting there watching the leaderboard after the after the media pound, and you went from 19th to third place, and you were trending third on Google and Yahoo. Did you know that? No, I didn't. That's so cool. Wow. Well, I was sitting there on the stage, and uh, I remember Steve said, the leaderboard has been shaken up, and I saw my mom go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! I've dropped off the leaderboard. All hope is lost. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you were going to the screen, and everyone else in the Team United States section started cheering, and I just wanted to turn around so badly, but of course <gasps> the cameras were on me, so I couldn't see. I had no idea. And finally, Steve said, "And Miss United States has rocketed up, rocketed up to third place." And uh, that's whenever I knew. But I, I was sitting there for a long time, not knowing what happened. <laughs> You have got to be kidding me. You had no idea what happened. With the multimedia challenge, I had worked so hard at that, and I, I had really, really hoped that I would win that because, I mean, I was a journalism major, or a double major of political science and journalism in college, and so I, I definitely wanted to do, um, do my best in that challenge, and so obviously Pageant Live was the natural fit for me because you were my first interview. After yes, I went thank you. And so it was only fitting that you did my Miss World interview. And uh, I had I had a lot of really fun things that I pushed out on multimedia. And they wanted to see that the multimedia challenge winner was someone who could um, really reach out to the people that she served, the people that she represented. And so I wanted to do something fun and just let them see what it was like at Miss World. And um, I did a few interviews, like roommate interviews with Miss Scotland. And I showed them, uh, showed the viewers what my daily workout routine was like, what I did to stay healthy and fit, uh, my favorite American foods, my favorite American pastimes, things like that. So it was really just trying to get involved uh, with the people that I represent and let them know that, you know, I'm just, I'm just here to do the best that I can to represent you. I want to let you know that Pageant Live and the, the Miss United States team was machine was right behind you, helping just pushing those out. I saw a lot of those interviews. <laughs> I shared a lot of those interviews, so, and, and it, it, it was you. It was fabulous. It, it was a lot of fun. I could tell you were having a lot of fun too. For the support, it was it was really really uh, just reassuring to have that team behind me. I agree. Now let me ask you, I, with all the selfies and all the videos posted, you clearly were very close to your roommate, Miss Scotland. I was. Uh -huh. Yeah, I still am. I could clearly see that you two were close, but you 
two were in very strong competition together too because in many of the forums people were actually saying that you were the favorite pair to win not only because you two were so close but also because you two were such strong competitors. Yes, uh, she's an amazing competitor. I, I thought that she was going to be there with me until the end. I, I think she deserves so much great success in her future, and I, I know it will come to her. Um, what can I say, but we were meant to be best friends. I mean, from the very moment we met, I think she thought I might have been a little bit crazy because I walked in with 15 pieces of luggage and then I opened my suitcase and we were automatically, you know, besties because she wanted to dive into all my snacks. But we were, we were just so alike that it was a natural fit and I probably would have gone crazy for a month um, competing without having someone there that really supported it, supported me and uh, wanted to see me succeed as much as I wanted to see her succeed. And it was nice because in the first couple of weeks that we were there, she and I made every single challenge semifinal together. I know you did. <laughs> we just kept getting through uh, together mm -hmm. one by one and it was really nice because you know, towards the end, if she made something that I didn't make or if I made something that she didn't make, we were there like in the front row cheering so excited for the other because it sort of felt like if she had success, it was my su success too. And if I had success, she had success too just because we had that bond. So it was really, really, really nice to have, to find that kind of friendship at Miss World. I, I'm sure. I'm absolutely sure. I've heard that many times that people who are going through the same situation as you are, you bond because there's people who are, are very similar to you where, you know, in the situation. So it looks like, and you two were just looking like you were having a great time. We could see that. They actually, the staff actually ended up calling us the, uh, I think it was the terrible twins. <laughs> Always together, like just glued at the hip. And there was one day where we had nothing to do because we were group four and the other three groups of 30 girls had to go before us and interview. So we had the day off. And we went a little bit stir crazy. And we somehow convinced, we weren't allowed on our own, and we somehow convinced one of the chaperones to take us to the train station. And <laughs> they, um, they let us loose in the train station for a little while. And we thought that was like the greatest thing on earth. It was like kids in a candy shop. We went to all the convenience stores <laughs> and bought like all of this food and took it back to our rooms and had like a movie night and just ate. Non-stop. <laughs> we did. We got into some trouble together, and it was it was good fun. We had a really great time. I see, it's because you two look so sweet, you know. And they're like, oh, we'll, we'll take them, right? But still, I'm sure it was a nice break. Yes, it was. It was. We we had a really great time together. I love you, Ellie. <laughs> oh oh. Um, let me ask you now. One of the things you were with women from all around the world. Yeah. So. And we saw like what different people would bring in food, call in food and things like that. So you were exposed to many different cultures, many different people. Uh, what you, would you say that you learned from from at least one of them? What did you carry away from this world about you know the different cultures and and, and, and things like that? I think that my favorite culture to learn about was again from one of my best friends in this world uh, was Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. And uh, Miss Trinidad and Tobago, Sarah Jane Waddell, she loves to fill us in on the culture of TNT. And uh, it's just such a vivid and lively culture and so much fun to learn about, to see it in action. She showed us all about Carnival, which is like their big festival where they all get dressed up in huge, huge extravagant costumes. And I mean, we have Mardi Gras, we have things like that in the States, but nothing to that level. It's unbelievable the culture that they have I mean just so um, so colorful and uh, she taught us a lot about their different um, superstitions they're actually very superstitious people and on our way home from the Oxford debate it was so late at night and kind of an eerie night it was a little bit foggy and really dark uh, there were only a couple of us awake on the bus, and she decided to get into the ghost stories of Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> and so she was telling us all the ghost stories about uh, from her home country and um, just what they're like. And it was it was very very interesting to learn. But of course, you guys may have seen that Miss Thailand had Thai food for us almost every night, and mm -hmm. so we would go into her rooms and have Thai food parties and just sample all of the different foods from her culture. So that was really great fun as well. 
Wow, that sounds like you guys had a great, and I know that you were working very hard. We saw the challenges. Miss World really, you know, pushes their contestants. Absolutely. And you know what? We saw the, uh, two, we saw that you, everyone was having a great time. They were bonding. They were getting to know each other. And, you know, that's very important when, you, you know, you go away from a competition and you go away with a lot of friends, too. You know, yeah. that's phenomenal. It is, it is. Now, after spending a month at Miss World learning uh, about each other in different countries, how do you think pageantry in other countries compare to the pageantry in the United States? I thought pageantry was huge in the United States until I met these other girls, and it just blows us out of the water. I mean, unbelievable. I hope that one day pageantry in the U.S. is to the same level as it is in other countries, but just the support that they have behind them. I mean just the fans that would come to support them from all over the world and we do have a lot of support in the US but nothing to that magnitude and I hope that one day people will be able to understand that pageantry empowers women and it allows us so many amazing opportunities I would never have been able to meet 122 girls from different countries some countries I had never even heard of until I went to Miss World and pageantry gave me that opportunity and I hope you yeah. Yeah, I hope that Americans will be able to accept that and get on board of the pageant uh, bandwagon and see what it's all about. That it's not just beauty; it's about you know, it's about physical fitness and about interview skills, about personality and intelligence. Just so much goes into it, and I do hope that one day we'll be able to reach the same levels that other countries have. Uh, but for example, Miss Russia was telling me that uh, she had ten thousand girls that were in her initial stage of the Miss Russia pageant and they all send in applications and it's then narrowed down to a smaller amount and then there's an interview process and it's narrowed down even more and only a handful of girls actually compete on the Miss Russia stage so it's I mean it's it is a big deal here but we don't have 10,000 girls per national pageant I mean that's unbelievable and that's that's not so out of the norm there are a couple of girls who said that there were thousands of girls who entered their national pageants so hopefully one day we will make it to that level as well but we're still a new country, so I, I think we'll be able to even out the field a little bit. You know, that's very interesting, and, and, and I have to give a big shout-out to Chris Wilmer because yes. you went straight to the United States stage, straight yes. to the Miss World stage, and I'm going to tell you, that is incredible uh, that he um, has this opportunity for, you know, for girls because you know normally it's another process and it takes time so he really really I mean you know shout out to Chris and to yeah. you did a fabulous job and his well, team because of pageant directors like him that we have opportunities like this so I am very thankful for him giving me this opportunity you know I saw your dance your dance was fabulous um, <laughs> up on stage at Miss World Thank you. It was. It was cute. It was like it was. It was very good. You know, it, it it picked up the rhythm. You know, and what do you? How do? You, how did other people view Americans? What What's your opinion of what they it's, thought about the United States? Well, it's it's very funny because when I think of the U.S., I don't necessarily think of country music and you know the the big line dancing that I did at Miss World, but. When I was trying to think of a dance to do for Dances of the World, which is something very unique to Miss World, um, I asked someone from England what he thought um, most people would think of when they think of America. And he said, honestly, line dancing, that's, that's what's unique to the U.S. Cowboys, the Western gear, that's, that's the U.S. When other countries think of us, that's what they think of. And uh, so I thought, you know what? Why not embrace the uniqueness that we have? Why not embrace the thing that we've given the world? That so many other people, so many other countries have embraced that. They've embraced country music and all that kind of stuff. So it was it was really cool to bring that to Miss World and see the girls really um, really enjoy it. And I was actually greeted quite a few times after I first got selected for Dances of the World with a yeehaw. And so <laughs> the girls wanted to know about Southern life. And um, it was really great to bring my Southern roots to the Miss World stage. But just beyond that, I did ask a couple of girls. I was very interested to hear what their country's perception of America is. And pretty much everyone said, powerful, powerful. And I did find that very interesting considering we're one of the newest countries that competes at Miss World. And um, not that competes in Miss World, but in the world. And uh, it, was, it was very interesting because, yes, we are powerful. And I hope that that's 
that's the same on uh, the pageantry stage as well, is that people view us as a force to reckon with, and that will continue to send great girls and great representatives of this very powerful and great country. Oh, I agree with you. I agree with you 100%. You know, we are a great country. There's a lot of great countries out there in this world, but I, I'm very honored to be an American also. And I think you represented this just phenomenally. You did a wonderful job, and we were so proud to have you on that stage, I have to tell you. Thank you so much. It, it certainly made me even more patriotic than I already was. It's, it's definitely a special moment to represent your country and know that you are representing one of the greatest countries on earth. Yeah, you know, that's true because you're absolutely correct. You know, it, I've noticed that too. When, when you have, you go and you represent a country, it's like a whole different, it's just a whole different level of competition. You know, I, I find that very, very interesting that it, you were. You were representing the country and, um, you know, like I said, you did a great job. Now, let me ask you, though. So you were over there a month. Did you find it hard to keep up? keep healthy and keep a balanced diet and stay in shape. I mean, you had a lot going on, okay? I mean, really. <laughs> it was difficult. It was very, very trying. Luckily, I had a great prep team behind me that prepared me for uh, to expect that. Luckily, also, Miss World has a sports phase of competition, so I at least had a couple of days where I was sure to get in a good workout. Uh, but other than that, we had rehearsals from you know, very, very early, early in the morning until very late at night, so some days it was difficult to get to the gym. And I am very health conscious, so I, I wanted to make sure that I maintained a balanced diet and incorporated a lot of workouts if I didn't, if I couldn't maintain um, a very healthy diet. And that was the main reason in me bringing the big suitcase of food is that I had a national sponsor, Isogenics, who gave me all sorts of great protein shakes, protein bars, and snacks. And if I couldn't eat one of the very hearty meals that England is so famous for, then I had a protein shake or a protein bar or a snack to go back to. So that was that was certainly um, a way that I got around the could have been bad eating at this world, but towards the end of it, I caved a little bit and I started indulging in the full English traditional breakfast because it was just too good to pass up. So that Hi, was Elizabeth. You, we know even though you're perfect, we know we know you have downfalls occasionally. We're okay with that. Oh, it's just so good. I do miss that. That's the main. That's one of the main things I miss is the English breakfast. Let me ask you: the last few days of competition, you'd been there a month. I'm sure that. You know, everybody was tiring. They were ready to go home. You've been put through a Miss Worlds, uh, you know, the different competitions. You know, you guys were always at, you know, different things. You were around town for a whole month. So walk us through the last few days of your competition. What was it like to be on that stage? It's so funny that you say that, though, because no one was ready to go home. We all wanted a couple more weeks there with everyone. And, um our family had arrived by the end, by the last few days in this world, so we got to see them. We weren't homesick anymore, and um, I, we formed such a bond. We formed a family at Miss World, and we knew that there was a possibility we might not see someone that was in our group ever again. And uh, so, yeah, we certainly wanted a couple of more weeks, at least a few more days, and it was very sad. It was very bittersweet coming to the end because it was what we had all worked so hard for so we obviously wanted it to be there but we didn't want to give each other up either and it was definitely a trying couple of days because we were in rehearsals non-stop didn't stop and we just ran this show over and over and over again but by the time the show actually came no one was really that nervous because we all knew what to do and um, the Miss World organization practiced very well in advance of that. That's funny. So you were just, it sounds like a big slumber party. <laughs> yeah, it was. And actually a lot of the girls, the last night uh, before the finals, we had another Thai food party. So we got to all, you know, leave each other videos in our phones that if we missed each other, we could just go back and watch it and um, take pictures, take last pictures, make sure that we got all our giggles out of the way and all of our nerves out of the way before the pageant. It was. It really was just so nice. It was like camp, honestly. <laughs> Do you still stay in touch with a lot of the girls? I do, every single day. Every oh, wow. um, in my group, from group four, we formed a group me, uh, uh, sorry, uh, WhatsApp group chat, and uh, so I stay in contact with them every day. I hear from them. Obviously, we have a little difference in times, in time zones, but whenever one of us is awake, we you know, make sure we text everyone, see how everyone's doing, and I, I stay in touch 
more in depth with Miss Australia, Miss Trinidad and Tobago, and Miss Scotland. I talked to them quite quite a lot during the day, and um, we we definitely do well for having such a difference in our time zone. Amazing! It's an amazing technology has made our world really smaller and smaller and smaller. Do you know? Yeah. Planning a visit to uh, Trinidad and Tobago for Miss Trinidad and Tobago's birthday, and then Miss Australia is going to come over for the Miss United States pageant. So it'll be really nice to have her here. And to see oh, I can't wait! What it's all about yes. <laughs> okay, let me ask you now, real quick. We have to get down to. We need to get down. You were named Miss World Second Princess. Yeah. <laughs> Which two in the United States? It is a more proper way of saying second runner-up. Yes. But yet you place third at Miss World. Yes. So <laughs> tell us, what does that feel like? And explain a little bit about, you know, the, 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 the crowning of the princesses. Well, I was so excited, first of all, to make top 25. I was actually the last one called, and uh, that was nerve-wracking. But once I made it into the top 25 and won the Multimedia Award and then progressed to the top 10, I was just thinking how great that was. And I was so proud, and I was so honored and humbled, and it was such a great experience. And then uh, I was caught into the top five, and I was standing there on the stage, and I looked down at all the judges, and they were just smiling at me. and. My family and friends and supporters were there waving their American flags, and it brought tears to my eyes. I mean, it really, really tugged at my heartstrings and took my breath away because that's, that's like the dream. That's what you work for. You work to get that close to becoming, to, uh, to becoming Miss World, to be Miss World, and to have that, that opportunity to represent your country. I mean, it was just unbelievable. And Second Princess, that's... That's so exciting to me because it's our first time at Miss World uh, from the Miss United States organization, and I'm I'm really just honored and so humble, uh, so humbled, and I'm just happy that all my hard work paid off and that I could make my country proud. Okay, we have to go back. We have to talk about the McDougal gown you had on. Oh, of course, <laughs> Lil Ronnie. I, I mean, it was it, it was so funny, and it, I saw an interview where McDougal was actually talking about designing that dress for you. Yeah. And I almost felt like I was invading like a love story <laughs> because oh, he connect, his connection with you yeah. and the way he was talking about he connected with you. And it was like, it was just, like I said, it was like, it was like a love story. And then when we saw you on the stage with that gown on, it was just breathtaking, I have to tell you. Oh, thank you. I, it makes me so happy that people saw the beauty of his design and saw how much hard work and effort went into it. And it's just, it's such a beautiful dress. I mean, there's nothing, there's not, not one bad thing about it. It's the most gorgeous thing I've ever seen. And I actually, I actually have it still in my room right there. You can see the tip of it. I don't want to put it away. <laughs> oh, too far. <laughs> Put it away. It's just so beautiful to look at. I had it photographed for the first time, um, I think about maybe two weeks ago by one of my good friends, AJ Day, and uh, that was the first time I put it on since Miss World. And I was just looking at it, and it brings back all the memories. And I mean, every time I look at it from now on, it's going to bring back the memory of being there and getting the second princess title and competing on the Miss World stage. And I, it's just, it's always going to be a token of um, my gratitude for being. Part of this experience. Okay, real quick, let's talk about this. The, the Miss World Second Princess. So you're really all. You're also world's World of Americas, correct? Yes, I'm Miss World Americas. And, uh, see, that's just phenomenal. I mean, that is just wonderful that you brought that title home to us. I was sitting there on. I was sitting in Dances of the World audition on my second day at Miss World, and someone was explaining to me, uh, no, North America does not get its own title. It's grouped in as America, so North and South America, mm -hmm. one continental queen of uh, queen of beauty title. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh. I'm competing against all the South Americans. They're like they're known for this. They're competing <laughs> for years. They're so beautiful. They're so good on stage. And I, I just don't know. I don't think I'll be able to get that title. I just it's out the window. And <laughs> the more I competed, obviously, I I feel like I picked up steam as I continued in the competition and uh, showed that I I really prepared for the for the Miss World pageant and. 
when I got that title, it was just so exhilarating and so exciting because I um, it signified that I made the top score out of anyone in North or South America. So now I get the honor of representing not only the United States, but North and South America as well. So I'm looking forward to traveling more across both continents to represent the Miss World organization. You know, and, and it was just, we were just, we were in awe, you know, as I'm sure you were. Yes. So, what, so, Tell us what was your most favorable? What it what what is your most memorable moment from this world? Because I know there's many. Gosh, it's hard to choose because there's just so. I mean, it, the whole thing was amazing. Obviously, competing on the stage that's got to be number one. Competing and actually placing top three at Miss World that's that's the icing on the cake. That's amazing. That's unbeatable. Uh, but apart from that, you know, making my friends, having that that bond between me and all the other girls and having our Thai food parties and uh, our little sleepovers, just getting to know all the other girls, all the other cultures, that's something that I'll always remember and always be grateful for. And you make a very valid point. Pageantry opened that door and pageantry opens doors for women. And yeah. that is definitely one thing that we need to get out, that pageantry opens doors and you are a wonderful example of someone who walked through that door and you were extremely successful and I'm sure you will be successful throughout your life. Thank you. Well, um, actually, the... Sorry, I lost my train of thought. That's okay, uh, no, and I'm sure you're tired. I had to tell you, but I can't remember what it was oh, now. But now. <laughs> That's okay. Did you know? I mean, it's it's late, and we have covered a lot of territory. But I have to tell you that it I can clearly see that it was a life changing event for you. Um, that's why my I applaud you know uh, pageantry opening doors, Miss United States giving the opportunity for you know someone to go to the Miss World stage. We're continuing, of course. Now we have Miss World America here in the United States. Um, and of course, we have the Miss United States that was just ranked number two, you yeah. know, pageant in the United States. So, what yeah. I would like to, I'm sorry, go ahead. Deservingly so. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, but what I would like to ask you is now, do you have any departing thoughts or anything that you would like our viewers to know? Do you want to add on a little bit to what you were saying about pageantry opening doors and uh, how people need to embrace pageantry as a great method for women to gain success and it's, it's so funny that you would say that because at Miss World I can't tell you the amount of times I was asked is Miss World outdated, is it sexist, um, do you feel degraded and I remember thinking no, no, why would I ever feel degraded by something that has empowered women in 122 countries, why would I ever feel that this organization is sexist when it's given me the most incredible opportunity of my entire life, when it's given me the ability to represent my country, to make a difference in the world, and you know, to do to do good, to spread the idea of doing good and humanitarianism across the world. And I think it's an amazing organization to be part of, and I'm so honored that I could have represented our country at this world. And you know what, too, we it, pageantry raises billions of dollars for charity. Yes. Billions of dollars. We have, go ahead. I'm sorry. Especially in the world. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I looked at those, you know, the, the different uh, charitable organizations. I mean, there's people out there doing great things. Yourself, yes. Save the Children. I mean, this that is just phenomenal. I mean, and how can we say, oh, what you're doing isn't right? I mean, from, I, I just... I, I don't think there's ever a place to ever tell women what they can or can't do. To me, that's sexist. I think women should be able to do whatever they want uh, to find their success, however they feel, however they deem fit, and to take advantage of the opportunities that present themselves, like I did uh, going into the Miss United States pageant, which led me to Miss World. I know. So I'm going to tell you, I really would like to thank you for being a guest tonight. Um, you know. I always enjoy talking to you. I've been watching you via the internet. I guess I'm an internet stalker. I don't know, but I love to see. I love to see women doing great things. I mean, oh, I mean, it's just to me, it's just that's the way to go because uh, you know there's so much negative out there, and to see a positive and someone doing positive things 
you know, I want to watch that because that's what I want my world to be. That's what I want my world to be. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. So I'm going to go ahead. It's late. All right. But I do have one other question to ask you. All right. Before we go, I would be honored to have you as a guest host on Ask the Crown. <laughs> and I'm honored to do that. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm Elizabeth, thank you. you. Thank you. I'm so excited to continue our partnership and uh, to bring a little bit of my um, of my experience from Miss World to Pageant Live. You know what? I thank you very much. Good night, viewers. Thank you. Please, thank you very much to Elizabeth, and thank you very much to the Miss World organization and to the Miss United States organization. And uh, everyone, please scribe. Thank you very much. And uh, you'll be seeing Elizabeth very soon. Yes, thank you so much. I look forward to it.